Welcome back. I got the cam fixed. We're good. You know, somebody has been just stared at for a good couple seconds to know he he messed up my cam, but I'm going to give him pets anyway, so it is what it is. But we are back for more UBAF, unapologetically black and fast here on Games Done Quick. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Um, we got GDQ's next all-women and fem speedrunning event, Frost Fatales, is coming up March 3rd through the 10th. The schedule is out now. Use exclamation point FF in Twitch chat to learn more. Prize submissions are open now until February 28th. Go to gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales for more info. Um, just remember, last thing is remember your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on a GDQ Twitch channel not only help support Games Done Quick's hotfix, but as you've seen today during our runs, also, you know, alters the game to help our runners do the best they can. So, you know, I'm just saying, might as you know, just help out, make all these wonderful speed runners, let them have, you know, the good runs and all the good luck and all the fantastic stuff there. Uh, if you enjoy watching speed runs, please consider con uh, contributing to the channel. And with that, it has been a absolute pleasure to run, to commentate, to host today. Excuse me. Um, I have been Big B's, your happy, helpful harbinger of hype. I am getting out of here. I am passing the torch to none other than the fastest and most, most fantastic feat on Twitch. The one, the only, J-Rock. Oh, that's my cue. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> First off, major, major shout outs to Big B's for pulling the double duty today with the, the excellent hosting throughout the entire afternoon and even opening it up with a run. Like, that's been phenomenal. Like, that's... Can't show enough love to that. Also, major, major shout out to Asani for the, the Sacred Stones run. That was also a great game. Uh, played that game as a kid. So seeing that played uh, the speed run of it was so dope. But hi, I'm going to be your host for the remainder of the evening. I'm J-Rock. I don't it ain't about me. Enough of that. Ew. We're just going to give it to the next runner. Uh, runner of the... You run the entire What's Musashi series, Home if Spice? I'm not mistaken. I do. The homie... Too Pro much Kami, melody? Yeah. You want to take it away from here and tell them about it? All right, yourself? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, like you said, the name's Protokami. Uh, appreciate <laughs> y'all for being out here. Um, I run the uh, full Musashi series. Oh. Most, most people don't know, which is crazy. Uh, this game actually has a sequel. Huh? Uh, Samurai Legend Musashi. Um, if you hate yourself, go ahead and play it. <laughs> no, no. Um, it's uh, it's not a bad game. Uh, there, There's definitely more misses than hits for it. Um, but... Uh, definitely worth checking out. Definitely cheaper uh, compared to this game. Um, I think it's like ten or fifteen bucks you can find online. Uh, but this game, this game right here, Brave Prince of Musashi, definitely a cult classic, a JRPG favorite of mine. My first um, uh, RPG that I ever bought with my own money um, and experienced. Mm. Um, so this one and uh, Tales of Symphonia, those are the two that um, have stuck with me throughout my entire life um strong yeah um real like real, real good game real good game i i highly recommend for those of you that don't know about this game i highly recommend it couldn't uh couldn't couldn't give it any other praise uh, higher than that um but um we'll go ahead and get it going um we're gonna do a uh, three count in three two one let's do let's it, do it. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for this. I'm so excited for this. Uh, let me make sure I got this pulled up here. Yep. Now, this is huge for me because personally, I grew up in the PS1 era. Yeah. So seeing games like this, I didn't play this when it released. I played the demo. Mm -hmm. And the demo, I think, is where most of us Yep. that I know started with this and was just like either we were upset that we didn't get into it or we went and got it immediately. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and that's kind of where I uh, where I started, right? I think that's where, yeah, you could say that's where everybody started because the demo had what? It had the uh, it had one of the dungeons. It had um, the tower at the beginning, which is wh what we're about to go to. Um, mm -hmm. And it had, I think it had one more level too. Um, the opening forest. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's what I remember the most is the opening forest. 
So what you guys saw me do just now, and I kind of messed up on it, um, and I'll get into why it was a mess up uh, in a little bit, but I grabbed an ability called Gunshot um, because, you know, Musashi never gets caught lacking. Um, this gives us the ability to kind of shoot uh, telekinetic bullets at a distance, um, and I'm going to utilize these to break these statues up. Um, so the mess up happened uh, when I was trying to assimilate the ability. Uh, what you do is you kind of uh, charge up a power, and then you can use that power uh, to throw your sword uh, fusion, and you have to like tap B as fast as possible. Um, and this is what gets you the ability. Now, um, what a lot of people don't know is this game actually caps you on your inputs. So if you're just hey. like spamming B as fast as you can, or step B, spamming square as fast as you can, um, the game will start to lock the uh, lock that input. Um, and you can uh, miss the, what, is it, what do you call it? You can miss the assimilation like that. Um, there's gonna be something we're gonna do to kind of uh, fix that later on in the game. Um, and I'll go ahead and explain it now. Uh, it was discovered a few years ago that if you uh, if you have a second controller uh, turned on during the gameplay, it removes that uh, that barrier. It also reduces your um, your latency. Uh, and the reason why I don't do it now is because some of the tricks that I'm going to be performing at the beginning of the game, uh, I, I'm kind of already used to that latency, so switching it up will kind of mess some things up for me. Um, going up this speed tower. Speedrunner habits. What's up? I said speedrunner habits, yeah. my bad. Yeah, no, 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 you're good, you're good, you're good. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do, what we're doing here is I'm farming bats for money. Um, and <laughs> I got super lucky and got the 500 off the bat, so I don't have to do that no more. Um, which it's that is it's very rare uh, to get. So you get a range of I think it's 10, 100, and 500 um, on the uh, money pieces. What I, I forgot what the what the currency is called in here um, on the coins. Um, and a lot of times the first few waves of bats don't spawn anything at all. So you're just literally sitting here, um, you know, wasting a few seconds trying to get the money you need. But we actually got the 500 um, first try, so we're good to go for the rest of the game. Uh, this money is going to hold us until um, until mid-game. Uh, we're just going to pick up a few heals um, early on, and we're just going to do our best to not utilize them until um, a specific dungeon. All right, all right. So what you saw me do there, uh, what you're supposed to do you're supposed to utilize your assimilation ability again to uh, assimilate one of those red guys. They have a um, ability called stun. You want them to walk over, step on the uh, platform, uh, hit stun, and then then you can walk over. But if you stand just in front of the, uh, the platform and have them swing, it gives you just as much time to walk over, grab the sword without uh, wasting any extra time. Interesting. And then we've got you know, everybody's favorite part, the woe jumps. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of guano. It is a lot of guano. Mm. Was that a, uh, was that a, uh, God, what's his name? What's that movie that Jim Carrey did with the, uh, with the animals? The pet detective. Pet detective? Yeah. Pet detective. Also, were you just like holding all the way to the right and dodged almost this entire section? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just like, wait, you should have. It looked like you were real close to falling right there. Yeah. So the first part of this, you can just slide off to the right and avoid everything. Um, there's gonna, there's going to be a lot of stuff where it's just going to be like uh, that shouldn't work like that. But um, they just didn't complete that part of the game, I guess. <laughs> mm. Ace Ventura, that's mm. it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ace Ventura, yeah, pet yeah, detective. Ace Ventura, pet detective. Yep. All right. So you don't hear voices in this game, but I'm gonna let y'all hear this voice because he is by far the best voice in this entire series. Um, there's one line in particular. Mm. Ah, shucks. 
Shut up, you dumb gal, or else y'all gonna get a licking. Quality voice acting. Quality. <laughs> I think I heard at least three different accents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't quite pin where he was from. You know what? Never let him know your first or your next one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, the voice acting is really good in this game, actually. Uh, the VA for uh, Musashi is the same VA who plays uh, Izzy in Digimon. And you've got a uh, Steam Blue been here Ooh. too. It just sucks that you do not uh, get to hear them at all. Oh, that yeah. Um. So this first boss fight, which you saw me do, um, you gotta you can like kind of position yourself in a specific way to, uh, you know, knock out both legs at the same time. Um, yeah. If you're lucky, you can grab it. You can get a crit and knock out one leg in a uh, in a complete swing. Uh, but most cases you have to do it twice. Um, okay. One of the other things that you have to take account is uh, when he's moving back at the uh, second stage, he actually has steam going out. But what we did was uh, we timed the luminous spin and that gives us iframes. Uh, that spin has a ridiculous amount of iframes. So we just dodged getting hit all together. Um, one little tidbit that I didn't get to show off here um, is that that head actually has uh, a hitbox. So you can actually damage and destroy the head. Um, we just didn't do it. It doesn't really do anything. It's just like a weird thing that they added. I don't know why they added it there because it doesn't help or hurt the boss fight at all. You know, I think I feel like back in the PS1 days, they did things because they had ideas and then they couldn't execute those ideas like how they wanted to. And then they just never... Yeah. You know, went back and cleaned it up. You know what? That you know, I believe that. I believe that a hundred percent, especially with it in this instance. Um, yeah, like they probably had a, a climbing mechanic to get on top of his head at some point, mm -hmm. and they just you know never figured out how to fully do it, or just never bothered to figure it out. So, so you can get up there. Um, when he stops, mm -hmm. you can grab, you can hop on his leg, hop on like that main body part, and then jump to his head and uh, get a few swings on it before it uh, takes off again. Um, I imagine, like, you know, you saying that now, I imagine it, it's supposed to be like a, a two-part fight, right? Or, a, yeah, a two-part uh, system where, like, you take the head out and then you do the other stuff mm -hmm. and that, you know, exposes the core or whatever. I'm glad they didn't do that because um, it's a bit of a pain. Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, a lot of work that, <laughs> that I do not want to <laughs> have to go through. This this run is enough work as it is. <laughs> it, it doesn't sound very conducive to a... A, a quicker speed yeah. run, so you know what? I'm glad they left. I'm glad they left it where it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, to give uh, context to the story, we went in, we talked to the old geezer. The geezer tells us to go to the librarian. The librarian tells us we should read books to um, figure out what we need to do, and we tell him that we don't like to read. So reading is for nerds, um, and we just yeah. uh, slid on out of there. Shout out to my nerds in the chat, though. Ain't nothing wrong with hey, that. Hey, absolutely not. <laughs> that wasn't a that wasn't a hit to to the readers because I'm a reader myself. <laughs> that that is a very nice shirt, by the way. As somebody mentioned in chat. Oh yeah, so I I found this on a whim four years ago from a site called T Public. I regularly go on there to find stuff, um, and uh, I haven't been able to find it since. Uh, this. Uh, you can see, you probably can't tell, but it's like, it's very faded. The uh, the art is wearing out um, and it sucks. Uh, I typically I typically make a habit of buying two shirts for this exact reason. Um, just wear this one out so you can't no more and then grab the other one. I've had, yeah. You got the other one, yeah. yep. I do that consistently with <laughs> hoodies and shirts that I like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a, if you got the money for it, it's a good, ha it's a good habit. Cause you know, they yep. shrink and everything. Ah, I hate that mm -hmm. jump. Um, so what we are set, mm -hmm. what we're setting up for here is uh, <laughs> um, we're gonna grab this ability, not get hit by that guy, um, and we're gonna carry this ability all the way over to Twin Peak Mountains, which again is uh, part of the demo. Um, what we're doing is we're gonna utilize this trick or this ability to pass going up the mountain picking up the four logs and doing the rafting minigame to come back down to get the uh, L brace. Um, 
And how the trick works is we cancel the jump on a very specific frame and store the and store the jump to be able to jump longer where we need to. So I'm gonna be quiet right here so I can listen to my audio cues. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, we got it. Um, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna mm. slide down, and we're just gonna make our way, make our jump. So the audio cue that I was listening for was that bounce that Musashi was doing uh, as he was like pogoing on his uh, sword. You have to um, cancel the jump on the same frame that he lands. What makes this trick impossible, well, I won't say impossible, hard, is um, the fact that there's no way to buffer it. Um, in uh, this early on in the game, uh, this is this trick and the next trick we're going to be performing. Uh, well, the second trip from here uh, that we'll be performing is uh, pretty much the biggest barriers of this run. Um, it kind of deters a lot of people um, from doing it. And so, what you're seeing me do now, we, there's a there's a sleep cycle, there's a sleep schedule that we have for this game. Um, and so for this, we do a full sleep and we take two small, for, for me, it varies from, from, uh, runner to runner, but I like to sleep and take two naps because it gives me the most time to set up for the upcoming tricks. Um, we just need to be asleep long enough for the appraiser to, uh, open up shop so we can get this, uh, ability, which is the L brace which is what allows us to um, climb up uh, specific uh, specific walls. Mm -hmm. One little, oh, I pressed the wrong thing, it's fine. Um, one thing that I always find funny in these games is that the, um, the adults in these games are completely useless. You know, we're we're a kid walking around with a giant sword, and basically what they just said was, "Hey, um, something's going on with our um, our steam system. If you don't fix it in time, uh, everything is gonna blow up." We have a guy that uh, that knows how to fix this, so we don't know why he's not fixing it. Can you go check that out for us? We're gonna get to the guy. We're not gonna do it here because that's not part of the run. But you typically get to the guy. The guy says, "I don't know what to do. I just drink coffee all day. Can you go fix it?" And uh, we ultimately you know what? go fix it. <laughs> I admire him. I admire him. You know what? He faked, he faked it till he made it to his job. <laughs> yeah. And then when the, and then when the troubles came in, he's just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yo, kid, can you help me? <laughs> oh. To answer your question, level best. Yes, this is. So I guess fun personal lore. I bought this game when I went to a convention, I think it was back in 2020, and I couldn't carry a bag in me bag with me in the at the convention. So I had it in my jacket pocket, and then we wound up like trying to run across the street, and the game fell out of my jacket pocket. Ugh. I got it, but it was a, a a very, very nice condition game that was no longer very, very nice condition. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was very, very painful. Thanks for reminding me about that. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, appreciate that. I love when people bring up past uh, past traumas. Love it. <laughs> we, we can bond over, you know, physical. But you know, it's really still it's still nice to own physical media games like this. Yeah, you know, especially with uh, everything happening with it. it, it but yeah, for real. if you can get it, get yourself some physical media. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna be quiet here because this is the the uh, the trick that uh, ruins runs. This is the steamwood skip, mm. and I'll explain it when I'm done. First try, let's go. Wow. Okay. Uh, so that was like some frame buffering. Yeah, yeah, um, and it was very awkward frame buffering. So that that. Those weren't the frames that I do that jump on. So the fact that I even got it when I did. <laughs> Improvisation. Um, so as you can, as you saw, it's a series of, of uh, very specific inputs that line you up to uh, a certain uh, spot at the bottom of that block. 
Um, you jump off to the left and you want to swing Lumina to kind of hit the block on your way down. Uh, what mm. this does is it, it allows you to do that little hop um, to go over the block and, uh, you know, do the rest of the game. So a couple of things to, that you have to take into account is that one of the major barriers is that this game can deny you this uh, trick, even if you do it right. Uh, there's a timer um, and I'll, we'll say it's like a five seconds on, five seconds off, where, where if you're in the five seconds on phase of the timer, you won't be allowed. Um, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. You're just kind of, hey, this is what it is. Um, the other thing to that, too, is you have to time. Um, when you're making that final jump to go over the block, you're holding X. And at some point on a very specific frame, you have to release X to allow Musashi to land on top of the block. Um, so with those two things in mind, uh, the setup, the setup alone is, uh, it's, it sounds complicated, but it's not. But all of the other stuff that play a role into this, uh, into that trick, you know, make it incredibly difficult. Yeah. No, I get what you mean. Like every, that, that sounds like a lot of, you know, speedrunner setups are just like, you know, it's kind of hard to explain, but when you see <laughs> yeah. it and when you do it, it's, you know, it, yeah, it makes total sense. I'm going to go back because he's going to, yep. So that guy, um, what would have happened, and I and I, I knew it was going to, um, he was going to disappear and he was going to show up on the other side of that lily pad, which would have stopped me from being able to jump on the uh, onto the uh, ground and just take water damage. Mm -hmm. So the though I would I would recommend practicing it um, because it does save a decent amount of time. I think anywhere between four minutes, thirty seconds to five minutes. Um, but you can 100% learn the whole run and just do steam and steam with until you're uh, comfortable with the trick itself. Okay. Someone in chat, I feel like asked a very, very, very good question. They asked, uh, how vital is that trick to the run? If it's yeah. Missed? So I just, like, yeah, that's, that's what I was asking. That's what I was answering. Okay. All right. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. That. So I'm about to do this next trick and I'm going to be quiet. Um, and I'll explain it when, um, when we're done. We're just full of first tries tonight. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> so that one is called Church Entry. Um, at this part of the game, what you would do is you would have um, an event with the pastor. You get the double jump. The pastor um, tells you to come back at a specific time. You jump on his back to gain access to the roof of the church to get in here and do this part of the, uh, part of the game. What I did was four frame perfect jumps um, onto the roof of the church. And to be more clear, that's not the roof of the, of the church. It's the barrier that keeps you from being able to get on the roof of the church. Um, mm. And then I pause buffered two frames to the right because I knew I was up too high. Um, and when you do a scroll swap, you reset, you put, Mus uh, you put Musashi back into a neutral position um, and that allows him to stand kind of wherever he is. And since we were like one to two frames above where we were, that allowed us to stand on that uh, barrier. So mm. now we're going to do uh, church escape. Just give me just a second. You got to line yourself up. So far, it... From the outside in, it feels like a very, very good start to the run. Uh, this is an incredible start to the run. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. So getting all those first try, like that's that's like we're doing amazing. Um, mm -hmm. And so, again, what you saw me do was set up a series of jumps to get onto the um, get onto the barrier on the other side of the church roof to allow us to jump off because um, we kind of going through that little mini boss fight and then coming out and talk to the pastor that kind of put us in a different chapter. Um, mm -hmm. And in that chapter, the front door to the, um, to the church is block is blocked out. So we have to, we have to figure out an alternate way to, uh, 
to get into the church. Yeah, get out. Yeah. Well, get out of the church. I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask because those adults were just complaining about the steam, and then we came back, and there was no steam. What happened? Oh yeah. Oh right, right, right. So we, we do a lot of <laughs> chapter skipping. So they, you know, the game just assumes, hey, they they fix steam wood apparently. And so specifically, when you get the Earth Scroll, I believe is um, where the game uh, kind of checks that flag of steam wood being fixed because you can't. Okay. You technically can't get the Earth Scroll without that. Makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> so you're gonna be seeing me uh, kind of walk around and like smacking all the things that are like directly in front of me. So the leveling system for this game, one, two, three, yep. Um, Lumina, we're, we're going to be util utilizing the biggest sword, which is Lumina. Um, and you get experience based on the things that you hit. Um, so the two things we focus on are Lumina levels and body levels. Body levels happen for things that are killed. Um, so if I can get an extra swing somewhere, uh, like that, I try, like where I tried to do there, I, um, I will. Okay. Uh, we don't want to take, like, too much time. Too much time. And like go back and smack things until they die for the body levels. We just kind of do what we can. One of the things we did to uh, kind of make this easier is we brought shrink with us to this uh, to this level. And as you can see, after shrinking you and killing that, level up right there. yeah, we got the body level. Ah. Those bats. Those bats. Those bats. Yeah. I, you know, I wanna. I wanna know. I want to know who was the originator of let's put bats in a game and make them the most annoying thing in the world because I got a, I, I got a few words that I want with them and it's going to involve, involve uh, uh, relocating the ankles. We got we to gotta figure out how far back this goes before we answer yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it, it's everywhere. <laughs> it was here. It was Pokemon with the Zubats all mm -hmm. over the place. Uh, it was Mega Man with the bats and the, the no stages where they knock you off the train cars. Yeah. Like, I don't, yeah, it, the bats have been a nuisance for a long time. And I, I'm just like you. I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough. Also, another thing I want to point out here is that uh, the soundtrack is phenomenal. And I've heard a lot of songs that have you been doing, mm -hmm. but it's been like very, very short lived because you've been going through it pretty fast. Oh, yeah. But that song there was pretty good. I liked it. Um, get the, um, Soundtrack in this game, 100%. Like, I, it's, it's, it sets... One of the biggest things that I... If you want to sell me on a game, give it an amazing soundtrack, right? That The game itself could be absolute dog doo-doo water. But the sound, mm -hmm. if the soundtrack is amazing, I'm sold. <laughs> yep. Yep. Chat's pointing it out. Zelda as well. Ghosts and Goblins. Yep. The devs have figured out the secret. They want to. They want to create a nuisance for the player. Yeah, bats. Bats. Just put them in there. Bats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and for those of y'all that haven't played the sequel to this, um, I would put the music in that game, um, up there with this one, like one hundred percent. I thought you were gonna say above. No, 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 not above. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, at, at worst, adjacent. Or at best, adjacent to. Okay, okay. So I just so grabbed country, uh, that's true. a bowl ability, and we're going to be utilizing that to uh, progress the stage. Um, it's actually by design that we that we have to utilize that. Um, but we're going to use it in a few extra spots, like where you see coming up. Um, we're going to use it to automatically kill these two. These things are called zombies, by the way. Um, we're going to kill these two, and it's going to give us our next body up. Um, we're going to kind of face tank these hits and there's two bowling segments that I'm, I'm about to do one of them um and if we're lucky we could get a strike and strikes are really good because they uh level up the they level up everything so let's see mm -hmm. oh they cheated me oh. <laughs> um which this is fine. This is the next best thing, right? Because if you don't get the strike, you, you want to do the next best thing that's going to get you out as fast as possible. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why strikes are so hard to do um, is because the the pins, the zombies, right? They're constantly moving, as you saw in the background. Um, yeah. So even if you set up like the perfect shot, there's still a chance it's going to whiff because of how they move. 
because of the RNG, yep. Good old RNG. <laughs> Every speedrun is familiar with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, we're going to give these guys a quick smack, go through our Indiana I'm not going to lie, that's very funny to me, just walking down the hallway, just smacking people yeah. and keep it moving. <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> and he's taking a nap! Yeah. Uh, you're gonna, wow. You're going to see that okay. a lot. <laughs> so that's taking a nap, but y'all don't sleep on this run. <laughs> so that part you don't really have to take, uh, take a nap on. Um, but I like to do it just because uh, one, uh, swag strats, but two, you actually have a tired meter um, that you don't really see in this game. So you have to manage uh, your tiredness as you progress. Mm. Wow. That one was like really bad. Okay. Okay, one more. Okay, okay. I, I, I will say like, in all of my years of running this game, there have been only maybe a few instances where I've gotten like a really, really, really bad setup on, uh, on bowling. And that was definitely one of them. I've never gotten uh, a hit that goes into, uh, I don't even know what you would call that because that wasn't a split. It was the one before the split. But it, that was, yeah, that, mm. was, that, was, that was just rough. <laughs> yeah, that, you know what? Everything else has been great so far, right? Yeah, so, you know, you got, no, you could, there's, there's, there's some give and take <laughs> in this run, you know. Yeah, it's there's fun. a lot of give and take. <laughs> Um, so I mentioned before, um, that the heels that we have, I, um, I got them for a specific dungeon. So, um, if you, if you guys are noticing, like I'm not healing, it's because I kind of, you know, I want to keep from using them, um, as much as possible. The cool thing about it, about this game is that Musashi naturally heals over time. Um, and that also speeds up when he sleeps. So by the time we get to where we need to, I should have enough health uh, where I can <sighs> face plant. Uh, face plant. Do what uh, you yeah, gotta do. Yeah. Well, uh, take plant, a yeah. yeah. Take a couple hits if if it's needed. It shouldn't. You don't want to do that, but you know. Smack that guy. Yeah. My favorite thing. Just smack yeah. him and keep it moving. <laughs> I'm gonna do a bowl set up here, get our another body up. I'm glad that uh, that lined up perfectly. He walked right into yeah, he it. Did. He was a homie. <laughs> he didn't have to do that, but you know, he was looking out for you. He's like, you know what? Things were looking a little rough for you back there. My friends weren't uh, giving you the strike, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out this one time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a tight jump here. Um, I'm gonna be a little quiet. Mm. Ah, you Bambi. <laughs> um, so it's possible to that that first jump I did was a tight jump, but it's possible to uh, kind of go around that. Uh, yeah, hold on, go around. Are those that. bats? Those are bats. They look annoying. They are here. <laughs> and so there's <laughs> there's something you can do that I didn't do when I first walked in. Um, there's something you can do to keep them from uh, hitting you uh, when you first get going, and I just I mm. I flopped it. I wasn't thinking when I when I walked in. Make a quick jump here. All right. Nice. Also, this I was just about to ask how's the help situation looking. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good now. Um, oh. This song. Definitely in the uh, top three. Did not want to take that hit there, but it's fine. That hurt, actually. Yeah. 44? Yeah. Does he? Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> um, so your defense is actually based on, uh, you're going to see it flash every now and then, uh, your mind. Um, and you build that up as you walk throughout the game. Um, so it's like an mm -hmm. overtime base level up. 
Um, there's really no way to manipulate it. Well, I'll rephrase that. There's no way to manipulate it to where it would be beneficial in this run um, because you would do ha you would have to do a lot of excess walking. Now, mm. the downside to that uh, is if you are too fast when you get into the uh, the later levels, um, everything already kind of one shots you towards the end game, but it's um, kind of magnified if you're like on a really really fast pace. So it's like, this sounds like like physics class or something like that. When you're running into something faster, it hurts more when you hit it. Yep. Is that what I'm gathering that's, from that? Yeah, that's, you know what? That's real. <laughs> I understand. I I totally understand. I was like, I'm, I think I'm on the, the right page here. Yeah, that, that tracks. All right, I think I set this up right. Either I make the jump I'm or I'm going to fall to the... Nope, okay. You didn't do Oh. It. That's okay. Make a tiny adjustment. There we go. See? No problem. Nice. So that jump is a spe is especially tough because you can't just make it. Um, you're actually jumping off like a micro, well, micro pixel, sub pixel, whichever one you prefer to call it. You're jumping off of a sub pixel um, that just barely sticks out of the um, five, six, seven, eight and jump. Um, and jump and stretch and jump. <laughs> no, um, so uh, <laughs> you, um, it's hard to explain, but imagine like you see a, uh, you see this edge on the right side of me. There are mm -hmm. micro pixels that stick out every so often. So think of like, uh, think of like in terms of a square, on the ends of those squares would be those micro pixels. And we're utilizing mm -hmm. those pixels to uh, extend our jump long enough to make it to the other side. Um, That's interesting tech. That's very, very good tech. Also, shout out for, to Musashi for being the most grown up child yeah. <laughs> and already mastering the art of the 15 minute power nap. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. <laughs> just watch them take one as the platform was coming. I mean, let me, let me just take a nap. Take a right quick quick. Yo, Musashi, mm -hmm. I feel like, was like me in a past life because he has the ability to just sleep anywhere and everywhere and that was me growing up right it didn't matter like it, it could be sand it could be out there on the grass like if i was sleepy and i was tired enough i'm taking a nap <laughs> that must have been nice man it must have been nice it was like i don't i don't have that anymore i don't have that power <laughs> um kind of sucks now um yeah but i will say one thing one of the things that they stick with me i am a horrible 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 and i can't stress that word enough horrible travel partner um if I'm passenger, 45 minutes into the drive, I'm asleep. And I'm asleep the whole way. And I don't- Oh no, I'm <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I know people get mad because they'd be trying to have a conversation with me and they'd be just like, oh, why are you staring out the window? Because I'm like, I'm trying to stay awake so I can, so I can listen to you. Yeah, yeah. Like I can't, I can't, I'm in the car. I can't do both at the same time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't. I apologize. Hmm. All right, so uh, to give context to what's going on, uh, it turns out this is the uh, the restaurant owner. We're in the bottom of a restaurant right now. Um, this guy uh, opened up this demon infested dungeon because he said he heard that there was treasure here. Um, we get through the trials, which is what we were doing. The four doors were the four trials of the dungeon. Um, and the prize, it was a quote unquote ugly belt. So he gives us the ugly belt as payment for uh, doing what we did, which, you know, doesn't really sound all that great, right? Um, but when we uh, go and take our little nap and go to our appraiser, it's gonna be our next ability, which is the double jump. Um, what's cool about this double jump is not that we have a double jump, but what we can do with it. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna sleep till 11 or power nap outside the door till 11. Um, and it's probably one of the most uh, game-breaking things that you can do. Actually, I, I say that it is one of the most game-breaking things you can do. <laughs> the door just go flying open as soon as it hit eleven o'clock. Yeah, I, I was. You know what? I was I was doing a practice <laughs> run last night, and I was laughing because um, in the beginning, so that door behind this door is the uh, is the bakery. 
Um, and mm-hmm. if you get to the back end early enough, you can actually hear the door close. And I was just laughing because it's like, man, it doesn't matter what's go- what she's got going on. Uh, 7.30 hits, that door is closed. <laughs> like, oh, you got something in the oven right now? Look, I'm sorry. You, nope. you, you can get it tomorrow. My bad. Get it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I respect it. My, that, that, that sign says 7.30, I mean it. Uh-huh. So this is where we... Uh, Break this ability. So we have a uh, infinite jump. Um, so remember earlier when I was saying that uh, when you swap scrolls, it brings Masashi back to a neutral position. Um, mm-hmm. Well, if you swap, do, if you do a scroll swap at the beginning of the second jump, it resets Musashi, allowing you to continue that second jump. That some really nice tech. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's some really nice tech. Um, and so this trick in particular is um, a little hard to do. Well, for me, I'll, I, I can only speak for myself, right? This, tri- this trick is a little hard to do when you have the, uh, the latency that you do when playing this game, um, which is why I turn on my uh, second controller earlier than I think most of the other runners. Um, it was really the the technique was really only used for uh, I want to say it was only used for end game originally for uh, the the final boss fight um, because mm-hmm. it it requires you to um, assimilate the boss, put them in a weakened state, and then strike them with uh, with Lumina, and of course. Um, they crank the dial up to 11 on, you know, your, uh, on blocking your inputs. Mm. And so what we just... Is this the part where we get the uh, the second controller going? Oh, the, yeah, the controller's been going. It's been going since uh, Church okay. Escape, yeah. Um, just because it's easier for me uh, to do these tricks. Okay. Uh, with the uh, latency reduction. So that puts us at, what, 10 o'clock? 2100. All right, I can take a nap and that puts us at 2400, but we might miss the door. Um, yeah, this military time stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we missed the door. Closed you off a little bit. Yeah, but it's fine. So the door opens up every 30 minutes. Uh, we missed the first one, but we got the next one. The door stays open. The doors open up uh, all the way up until I think 1.30 in the morning. So we have a little bit of time to... Uh, do what we got to do. But after 1.30, that's kind of a dead... If you're running late and, it's de- and, and it hits 1.30 um, and you miss the door, it's kind of a dead run at that point. Or you can mm. go back and sleep until the next night. Okay. I thought you was finna take a nap in front of the door. I'm like, with that zombie running around? I was I was scared as to where he was going when we missed that door. I'm glad it wasn't... So, fun fact is that uh, out in the overworld, the, uh, the, the zombies don't hit you. Uh, they, I don't know why. They don't attack you at all. So they just kind of free... Oh, that's interesting. They just kind of um, free roam. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So we got a... This is basically just like classic dungeon platforming here. Um, jump over the pillars. Don't jump in the lava. There's our bat. Leave me alone. Got a little Bambi hanging out, taking a bath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, I want to give a shout out to everybody in chat. The uh, we were talking about this before we actually came on here. The uh, how when this game shows up, like the cult following shows up, like oh yo Musashi, I loved this game as a kid, and I'm seeing a lot of that pop up in chat. Yeah, and it's good to see y'all. It's good to see y'all. All right, I think I'm gonna pop this guy, and I'm gonna get a plus two on Lumina. If it's not this one, then it's gonna be <laughs> there. It is. <laughs> I'm, I can't help but laugh. I'm so sorry. What's oh? <laughs> I'll just every, every time you just smack him and just run. I can't help but laugh. You just turn around like, hey, who that bad dude? What's going on? <laughs> All right, we're coming up to our first boss fight. Um, really funny any interaction. Um, Musashi basically makes fun of him for uh, what's about to happen. Calls him a geek, and then he starts to cry. 
You know, I feel that. Like, I'm cool being called a nerd, but a geek might be crossing yeah, the line. Hey, you know, bit. and he definitely felt it. You know, it made him feel some kind of way. See? Mm. And then he cries. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, you know, it makes you wonder, are we are we the bad guys in this game? Because it kind of makes us feel like we are. Based on that reaction, yeah. We did <laughs> We've heard three dialogue lines this entire run, I think. All shucks and geek, and I think, I, I can't remember what the third one was, but based on those, I would say that we're the bad guy. <laughs> okay, so what you just saw me do, um, that's how, that, so that's how the boss fight is intended, but I actually got an early kill on that. We wanted, uh, and we wanted that because he has a phase where he can't be touched. Uh, it's when he goes into a, uh, a, blue, fa a blue flame um, and it imitates an animal. Mm hmm. Oh. Okay, so he's going that way. You know what? I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna fly off like, oh, okay, we're doing random stuff now. RNG. Ah, got him anyway. Nice. There's a way to set it up to where he, like, kind of um, bobs in the corner, but that actually was. Uh, that still was pretty good. Mm -mm. That is a very nice touch how his tears turned into rage. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Even bigger fireballs than the last time. <laughs> so this is that uh, that mode that I was talking about. And on the third on the third phase, he has just too much HP for us to really keep him out of this. So we just, you know, kind of let it happen. Um, and I'm not taking damage here. What's happening is I'm activating the water scroll just before the fire hits. All right. Okay, where are you gonna go? Oh, that way. Nice, okay. That was actually a really, really solid uh, Relic Keeper. Um, so the first phase, so the, the blue flames that I was mentioning earlier, the first, fra fla first phase, wow. He turns into a bat, which, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, and then that last phase, he turns into, I want to say that was some kind of octopus. Um, I don't know if he has a, uh, a, blue, a blue flame on the, uh, on the second phase or not. I've never done the fight long enough to see. Hey. Maybe somebody can confirm that for us. Actually, P-Man can. Uh, P-Man, if you're still here, is, or actually, Zach can too. Uh, is there a animal phase for the second phase of this fight? <clears throat> Can't stress how much I like this music. It's it's so good. And it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it reminds me of like oh sorry guys no 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 go ahead it, it, it's nothing I was gonna say because like coming out into like the the PlayStation era yeah where it was just like everything before this everything was kind of like the 8-bit sound mm -hmm. and they were just like oh wait no we can put more of that on the discs mm -hmm. and then we got soundtracks like with games like this and then two of my personal favorites being Legend of Lagaya and Legend of Dragoon and then things like the uh the Tekken soundtrack oh, and man. <laughs> the, the, the Resident Evil soundtracks and all of that. It's just like, you know, it, it was such a nice like blend to, to have the um, the video game feel, but then being able to put so much more into it mm -hmm. than just, you know, the chiptune sounds. Mm -hmm. It's dope. It's so dope. So I'm about to do something called Slug Skip. All right, Piano Man confirmed. There's no blue flame one second. Cool. Um, and so that trick works in the same way, almost in the same way um, as the trick earlier where we stored the jump. But instead of storing the jump, we actually want to deliberately um, cancel the jump after we hit the ground. Uh, this gives us a little bit of extra height. Um, combine that with a double jump. It gives us just enough height to kind of get over that rock and slide over to the other side. Um, Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, that's not a slot. Uh, that's not a rock. That's actually a giant slug. <clears throat> and what you? Wh what? Yeah, it's a giant slug. So what you're supposed to do is there is a specific person that you have to save. Whoa! By the way, you have to save people in this game, um, which we only save three. <laughs> um, 
But you saved this. That's, a, that's one heck of a by the way, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a specific person that you have to save, and she gives you rock salt. And this rock salt, you use that to uh, shrink the slug down. Hmm. I kind of figured it was salt. I saw you practicing this one before I got it, before we started. Yes. So this is the uh, Kojiro fight. Kojiro is our uh, rival. Um, you can definitely see there is some uh, inspirations from Sonic and Knuckles. Which, you know, 100% here for. So for mm -hmm. this fight, what you want is the, uh, not that. You want that. You want the fire, um, the firebirds. Um, Cause that's the fastest attack. You don't want the, um, those. The white bird. Yes. yes. Because uh, normally what follows after those is a jump. Uh, just waste more time. Don't do it. Oh, and he did it. Okay. He was very adamant <laughs> on getting that out. So. He's, like, he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm on the, I'm on the GDQ channel. I'm finna show them what I can yep. do real quick. Yep. That's exactly what it was. Um, <laughs> but luckily we actually got some decent crits on, uh, on this, uh, on this fight. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we did the trick to jump over the slug, and now we can't get over uh, by normal means because the slug is still there. So we're going to use the frames of uh, the princess and have her use her butt to uh, push us out. I thought she was fitting... Uh to Goomba her Mario style, just like jump. Oh no, no, oh, no. that was she's just gonna she's just gonna nice. put her butt in a very specific position, and we're just gonna slide Some on strong out. glutes. Yeah. You thought we was gonna? Oh, you thought we were gonna jump I on her? I thought you were gonna <laughs> jump on her head and then bounce over everything. Oh, uh, I would. I thought that's what she was trying to do. I would honestly prefer that because what you saw was a a nice uh, version of that. That can, okay. that can eat up like a minute plus on a run. I, I, I figured that watching different speed runs when you got to glitch through things. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> I've seen some take 30 seconds. I've seen some take 30 minutes. Yep. No kidding. Yep. <laughs> so those three people that we okay. saved, uh, they're the mercenaries, the three mercenaries of the town or the castle. Uh, we're going to talk to them because they're going to uh, tell us the secret lo uh, location of the thieves that we were supposed to be looking for at some point throughout the game that we uh, just like completely ignored. Um, <laughs> you know what? Everything else fixed itself, so why not ignore it? Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but the reason why we have to talk to these guys specifically is because this is what gets us access to Frost Palace. Um, you have to go through meandering, meandering forest um, in a very specific direction. And even if you know that direction, the game will still deny you. So this is kind of a uh, a flag for the game to allow you access. Gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> so now that we've got those three guys, we'll go ahead and make our way through, which, uh, you know, like you, you've experienced firsthand that this game has a pretty good soundtrack. Uh, Meandering Forest is probably... It's 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 a top three for me. It's a it's a it's a. Really oh, we about song. to get a banger. It's it's a. Banger. Oh man. Um, I I think what makes these games so good is that, um, you know, they're orchestrated. I love that. Yeah. I used to play the demo of this that. all the game. That, you know, we were talking about that earlier. I feel like yeah. everybody's first experience was the demo of this game. The demo. Yeah. Um, and, and to bring it back to orchestra real quick, I got another, like, we were talking about this earlier, I got a classic, because I collect vinyl records of video games, I got a classic one of the GoldenEye 64 Yo! soundtrack. But it's But it's not like the, uh, <clears throat> the, sound, the, the sound itself, it's actually an orchestrated version of it. Yeah. So it's it's incredible. That's if I can find cool. it, I, I highly recommend it getting it. Okay, it let, let, so good. let me ask you this. How expensive is getting into that hobby? Because I've been wanting oh. a Third Strike uh, label, and like, Honestly, Ooh. and like, I, and honestly, like, I say I want the, I want the, uh, I want the vinyl, I want the third strike vinyl, but I would do nothing but listen to Killing Moon all day, all day. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I know, man. It's, 
It's a uh, it's it's boom, boom. That's a lot of money, bro. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. First off, you gotta invest the money in a good player because you want a good player. Yeah. And then if you're doing like video game vinyl, mm-hmm. uh, those are very very hard to find at good prices resale. Got you. So like if you're like if you're just going to dig in some crates, you could go to like a local record store. You could get some good stuff. You might be able to get like a couple of classics for like probably like four for about maybe fifty dollars if you're lucky somewhere yeah. around there. But if you're buying them new. Man, they're expensive. Okay. So I think the third strike, I think I've seen that one on a website, and I think I saw it going for like 70. Okay. Okay. That, that's so, that yeah, sense. that's like their starting point for things like that. Okay. So, based on the amount of this, the golden eye one I got was only 40. Okay. But I say only 40. <laughs> but yeah, top of the list. It's expensive. Top of the list, if I wanted to, you know, saying like, you know, top five vinyls I would get would be this game, Klonoa, third strike, um, does a final of this game even exist? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. And you know what? I'm going to answer that for you right now. Because <laughs> if it does, um, your boy might be broke, but I'm about to be broker. <laughs> no, they have CDs, but no vinyls. Ah, uh, dang. Okay. Uh-huh. That's some pain. Yeah, see, hey, Manny, Manny gets it. Kill, Killing Moon, that Akuma, that Akuma <laughs> stage, man. Like, it just, it, mm-hmm. there's hype behind that. That and uh, Makoto stage. Uh-huh. <clears throat> oh. I'm trying to think. You know, it's like, it's really, really hard when you put on the spot. But I got, I got obviously, my personal favorites. And one of them is my Metal Gear Solid joint. <gasps> no! That goes all the way through and through. Yes. Where can I find it? Wait, did you miss it? Where can I find um, it? No, I was, I was saying no because you got uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, vinyl. Oh, no. I thought I thought I missed it. You messed up a jump or something. No, so no, I'm no. Like, no wait, if, wait, if, if I, wait, what happened if here? I mess up I'm that scared. jump, <laughs> if I mess up that jump, this would, that would have been a soft lock. Which, actually, um, that's what, when you saw me earlier creating that uh, that save, uh, that's what mm-hmm. I was setting up for. So that that jump is a, um, is a soft lock if I mess it up um, and we have to do it okay. going this way isn't a problem but coming back is where the problem happens um, because you get gotcha. you have to get an item um, there we go you have to get an item that allows you to walk on ice um, and since we don't get that for this run um, that's that's kind of the hazard okay got you got you but yeah I'm gonna give y'all if y'all got a pen and paper in chat, write this down. This is are some of the sites that I get my vinyls from, specifically the video game vinyls. Um, it's a very, very long shot to start, but Merch Bar has a few. Particularly if you look at like the limited edition Hollow Knight, Merch Bar has that for sure. Um, you can usually go to Black Screen Records. You can go to a place called Laced Records. Um, 8-Bit Records also has some. Uh, Mondo Shop is where I got Metal Gear Solid and my uh, Silent Hill Trilogy. I mentioned black screen already, right? I think there's one more, but I can't remember right now. I'm going to have to look this up for y'all real quick. All right, but give, yeah, remember those if y'all looking for them. Give me a second. Proto, I can get you that list later. All right, give me a second because this is actually... Okay. This is where the run could end. Okay, we're good. Nice. Um, so down there at the bottom, uh, you saw like there was a, like a little slope. Uh, we cannot mm-hmm. do anything on those slopes uh, because it's solid ice. Um, so we get what's called the legendary shoes, which only can that that's on, we only use it for this uh, for this dungeon. Um, but it, yeah, like I said, without them, uh, if I were to uh, fall in there, uh, that would have been the end of the it's run. A wrap. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> and I'm assuming we skip those. To get <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. Actually, believe it or not, the shoes are here. <laughs> um, but you know what? Faster than I get them. Well, it, it 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 is more so because you know the 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 ongoing thing here is that any legendary item you get, you have to go back to the appraiser and have him sh- tell you that's what they are. Um, oh. But there is an item that you can get. Um, that can appraise stuff for you. It's the legendary goggles. Um, He's just putting that man out of a job then. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. (laughs) 
Um, and so the strat is to get the goggles, go have those appraised, and then go get the boots in this uh, in this stage, um, so that mm. you can do the rest of the uh, rest of the run. Gotcha, gotcha. So you're gonna see me. It feels like a. No oh, good. Sorry, I was gonna say it feels like a staple in long adventure games like this that there's either an annoying water level yep. or one with a ton of ice. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a staple. Again, I'd like Shout to talk out some to the Ocarina of Time fans. Y'all know what I'm talking like about. Like to talk to the guy who uh, invented that trope. Got some uh, got some yeah. choice words with you and your ankles. <laughs> The water ice levels in the batch. We need to speak to both of you right now. <laughs> so you're seeing me like kind of do some extra shots. Um, and that's cause, oh, come here, turn around. There you go. Um, that's cause there is a, um, there's a level that I regularly miss um, during this part that's kind of critical to uh, the rest of this run. Uh, the reason why we focus on body and lumina level so much is because there are two, um, there are two enemies or two bosses specifically at the end of the game um, that get damaged differently than every other boss. So every other boss, it's kind of like a fixed damage type deal where um, mm -hmm. you hit them three times, three or five times, depending on the boss. Um, but there are two bosses where uh, there's that, that, that cap isn't there. Um, so we just want to get ourselves as strong as we possibly can to uh, get through that fight. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as you can see, you know, the, on this part, we're just going to grab these penguins and uh, set them on. What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? Get out of here! And we're just going to grab these penguins and set them on fire. Um, this power is kind of okay. unique, uh, just because. Um, the closer something is to you, the uh, the faster it will um, go away. So you really got to watch your spacing. Okay. <clears throat> um, so what you see me grabbing, uh, what what I've been grabbing, sorry, is the uh, there are three eyes that you have to collect, and uh, once you grab all three of them, that gives you access to the boss room. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say you open any chests real fast. I can't quite read the text. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the it's the red eye, the blue eye, and the green eye. Gotcha. I'm assuming that that green dot was a person that we were yeah not saving. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so those are those are benchotites. That's where like all the uh, people got trapped in and scattered throughout the uh, throughout the world. Mm-hmm. Just and we just don't, you know, <laughs> the, you know the, you, the, the important so, uh, thing is that they will be free when we beat the game. So there's no reason to do it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can hold on for another hour. Yeah, yeah good. All right. It's still so funny, though, like the, the the entire concept of it, running by people that you can save with a simple tab. Yeah. The running past the other enemies, smack them in the back of the head and keep it moving. It's, this is, to me personally, there's a lot of comedy going on here. Uh, so I just did um, balcony jump. That is a really hard trick to do. Um, it looked like it. it. looked like you almost got caught on the rail. Uh, yeah. Um, well, it's so it's harder and easier. I'll say the other runners will say I'm doing it the harder way. It's harder and easier for uh, and easier at the same time for me, just because the uh, the way that it's quote unquote supposed to be done um, is the is the better method. The, the, that way is definitely the faster method because it's just one jump instead of two. But I can't, I've never been able to line myself up to uh, get the positioning right to get that jump. So with that, um, it's, um, it's two, two double jumps. And you also have to, you have to clear the balcony on the other side, but you also have to clear the stair, oh, stairs. I can't talk. You also have to clear the stairs because that's a slick surface and you're just going to slide back down. Mm-hmm. All because we didn't get those legendary shoes. All because we didn't get those legendary shoes. <laughs> um, upcoming best boss fight in the game, by the way. I'm sorry, best boss fight music in the game. <laughs> okay. Okay. That sets the mood a little different. <laughs>
Oh, yeah, no, this is a banger. Yeah. And of course, I, if, uh, for those of y'all uh, seeing this game for the first time, we do get to fight the Blue Eyes White Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it is. <laughs> got the same stare and everything. Yeah. Oh, and he's sleeping on him. Because we don't care. <laughs> so typically what you want to do there is uh, you want to hit him with the flames and you want to jump out of the way at the last minute um, just to kind of avoid that. But we're actually really good on health, so it's not a problem. So those health items that we picked up, this is where they get used. Um, we're pretty much going to damage boost our way to the uh, next part of this boss fight. I was gonna say, you're cutting a little close there. You're scaring me. <laughs> you, you scared me for a second. Somebody in chat said, Kaiba? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Mm. Shout out to Guy, but one of the best trash talkers in anime. Hey, history. right? <laughs> There's this thing that I, I was watching the other day. It was like just like a montage of Kaiba talking mess. And man, he was when, he yeah, was he, he was a savage. You? Like <laughs> for real. But he didn't just ro he didn't just roast you. He made sure to hit it where it hurts. Yeah. And then the next generation and the previous generation too. You got it. Your grandpa could get it. Man, Kaiba was ruthless. Shout out to Kaiba. That's one of that's one of my favorite characters from any cartoon show that I've watched growing up. <laughs> so what I'm doing here, this boss has three attacks, um, but we're manipulating him so he doesn't do the third one. It, the, the third one is this giant uh, ice beam, but uh, it mm -hmm. takes so long that we don't we don't let him do it. Okay. Um, and so how you manipulate him is you just block those ice parts, and he what he does is uh, he just does the lunge again. Instead of uh, okay. going to the third phase, I think that should be all right. Yeah, there we go. And it was just a one hit, mm. man. And smack. Nice. And that's the run, or not the run? My bad. That's the. <laughs> I, I was like, whoa! I thought we, thought we had a whole another hour. What was going on here? I was. <laughs> not the run. That's the fight. That's the fight. <laughs> I was I was Mr. Krabs meme over here for a second. Yeah, I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about being below estimate. <laughs> oh, I was worried. I was so worried. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of worried, fire uh firebite. Uh she has watched me do this run countless times, and I am notorious. For not healing when I need to, um, so I think she saw the I think she saw the uh, the um, the damage boosting I was doing, and she uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> she when I saw it, I was like counting. I'm like okay, 18, and then we got to the 19. You took the other hit, and then you kept jumping. I'm like whoa whoa buddy, whoa whoa whoa, whoa hold on wait. Yeah, I saw. Hold I, hold I, hold I only did it because <laughs> I saw the 19, and I was like yeah, it's, it's fine. We'll okay. do one more jump. And honestly, like that that isn't. Something where like, oh yeah, doing it this way saves time. It's literally just me being me. <laughs> you gotta, you know, you gotta keep the audience on their edge. Yeah, you know? yeah. Make sure that they know. Yeah, you can't have y'all sleeping in the chat. I respect that firebite. I guess that one was specifically for you. <laughs> All right, so we make it back, hmm. and we're in the chapter where. Um, the mayor just pretty much told us that the princess has increased the uh, the taxes. Uh, I shouldn't have done that. Um, so what's going on in this town? Yeah, so that's that's what we got to do. So we have to go around and we talk to um, the shop owners to see what's going on. Um, we find out later uh, that it actually wasn't the princess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then four pieces of cheese. Cool. Um, and then we have to go back to Steamwood to stop this person, but we're not going to do any of that. Um, we're actually just going to go into this mine and uh, head off and trigger another cutscene. 
You, say, you know, forget fixing the, the, the tax situation. It's not my problem. No, it's not. Like, I don't even live here. No. I don't even look. I don't even go. I don't pay taxes yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So what are we headed to do now? Uh, I have to activate the water crest uh, that we passed by earlier when we came down here to get the, uh, the scroll. So... These crests, you cannot do anything with them until you've beaten the crest guardians. That's what these bosses are. They're crest guardians. Um, okay. So once you've beaten them, you, uh, you're you able to activate the, uh, the crest. This is going to trigger a cutscene that allows us to uh, uh, introduce ourselves to Ben and Ed for the first time, which this should have been done hours ago. Um, ben is also a really good uh, VA. I'm going to let you hear one of his uh, more famous lines. Mm -hmm. That's our guy. That's Ben. You could really hear the emotion behind yeah. it. <laughs> Just, I know that I do love the. I do really, really miss and love the uh, the old goofy voice actor from games like. Yeah, this. I really, really do. Hey, I, you know what? I'll say this. Like, there are two instances of goofy voice acting. This is what does it right. This game does it right. The sequel, absolutely not. Um, the best way I can I can um, describe the sequel in terms of voice acting, it's like they had a five hundred dollar budget and they walked outside of the building and picked the first six people they could find. That's you know, <laughs> that, that's the best the way I can describe the voice acting in that game. You know, as if they. It, Sounds like they got a decent, good six people, you know. <laughs> um, now the uh, the Japanese VA voice acting is a lot better in that game. In fact, uh, one of the uh, villains is voiced by the same voice actor who does uh, Frieza. Ooh, which Frieza? Uh, like, oh, well, it's like so. This game, that game came out in what two thousand four? So, mm -hmm. I guess the first Frieza, the OG Frieza. OG okay, Frieza, yeah. Okay. Is this the wind crest? <laughs> this is the wind crest, yeah. So this uh, will allow us to create tornadoes specifically so that we can um, barrel underground. Burrow underground, sorry. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't really question this until I just said it, but that actually doesn't make any sense. We get a wind element to use on the, the dirt yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um saying it out loud doesn't make any sense but watching it did yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it gives you super speedy dig powers but if, you know if you notice like i've only used the earth scroll once right and that was to get out of the area where you get the earth scroll um just seems like i don't know a, a wasted it's ability there be there. yeah <laughs> Even the wind does the earth better than yeah, the earth. Yeah. That's kind of messed up. That's kind of messed up, man. So we're going to uh, we're going to head out here. We're going to do a trick called Bramble Skip. It's just a uh, very tight uh, double jump. Um, what you're supposed to do is grab the ability of this guy, but we're going to smack him. Um, nope. There it is. No, it's not. Nope. Uh-oh. Hello? I think I'm doing it too. No. Okay. This is weird. There we go. Cool. There we go. Um, All right. So the reason why that jump is so tight is because the frames on those vines are a lot higher than they look. Um, there's actually a very specific point in the center where those vines kind of dip. Um, and that's where you want to hit your double jump. So I think what was happening okay. in that in that instance, in those instances where I messed up, was I was too far to the other side 
where the uh, vines start to come back up. Okay. <clears throat> I couldn't see. It looked weird from my point of view, but, you you know, I'm not the runner here. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely one of those it, it's one of the one of the ones where you definitely have to put a little practice into so you can familiarize yourself when you need to you know hit that double jump yes um you also have to make sure that when you're doing the uh doing the double jump you have to cancel on the first frame of the second jump if that makes sense uh, no i get it okay okay what are those and I'm fig- I figured that's like kind of an often thing, which is why we had the uh, the pause buffering stuff going on since like the beginning. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Got, got, got. So uh, we're gonna sleep for like six days. That's where I wish I could relate. <laughs> yeah. This is where the uh, where all the money we got comes into play. And what we're looking I'm for. Have the accent. No, what's up? <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to have to ask the chat if you press one, if you feel like you need the same right now. Yeah. <laughs> Just give me the week off, bruh. <laughs> um, so we're going to sleep till Thursday morning. Cancel by opening. No, no. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a scroll swap. Uh, when you scrap the, when you scrap, when you swap the scrolls, um, it resets Musashi to a neutral position, allowing you to do a second jump. Um, we utilize that also with a lot of other things too that allow us to uh, land on specific platforms and barriers that we normally couldn't. Okay. All right, we got our. Uh, My bad, I had to. Got our nap in. We're nice and rested. Uh, no, you're fine. I was looking for water and I forgot I drank it all. Man. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> but you know, I was gonna, I was, now that I know you're out, I'm here with you until the end. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna run up and get some water now. We're gonna, we're gonna go through this hey, together. You dehydrated together. Solidarity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know PG's gonna watch this vibe back and say, what are y'all doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that a giant ant? Oh, right. So uh, <laughs> uh, we had to use the gondola that we were supposed to go and find the part to fix and use it to break uh, to uh, hit the giant ant that was trying to get into that house and steal that guy's soup. Which sounds completely out of context and random when you're just bringing it up as a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we, we're speed running the lore. And when you speed run the lore like that, it's, you know, I just, maybe I should have just ignored the ant in the first place. I'm even, there's so many more questions. So um, there's a part of the game where you have to go through and find what's called the gondola gizmo. Um, and you figure this out after you go and uh, rescue the carpenter. Okay. Um, and that's just, it's just a way that allows you quicker access when going to and from um, the castle. But also uh, it's, you know, as you saw, it's a key point for getting to the next part of the game. Oh, yep. We're gonna eat that. So double jumping for me can be a problem sometimes when I'm not paying attention to where my cursor is um, in the menu. Cause you see, I like I, I menu so fast. Um, so what happened in that instance, I thought my cursor was off of Lumina. Uh, I went to double tap uh, X to confirm the switch and it was already where, uh, where it was. Oh, okay. Right. Um, we've got wind blowing against us, so we're going to utilize the uh, wind scroll to kind of get us through. Yeah, notice how we're using the wind scroll, not uh, yeah, the earth scroll, yeah. chat. <laughs> All right. Okay. 
I'll explain what I did uh, when we do the second one. Because this, this trick is actually like the bane of my existence. I gotta guess. Oh, we were right there. Come on. No. You got this, you got this. There we go. Cool. Hey. Whew. Okay. All right. So here's my guess as to what happened. We talked about this earlier, right? right. With the squares and the, the what are they called? The pixel popping pixie sticks or something? <laughs> the, the squares, the pixels that stick out at the end? We'll, we can call it that. Were, I think you were using those. So no. To, to kind of like, no. That's a good guess, but no. Um, <laughs> um, so what that was, um, when I was uh, kind of pushing myself into the background, um, you're kind of wedging yourself between the dead space, between the background and that slope. What's happening is it's causing Musashi to not necessarily land anywhere. Um, but if you do that with uh, timed double jumps, you can um, gain height. Okay. Um, the, there are two problems with that. Is that there are One is that there are specific frames that you don't really want to do that uh, jump with. So anytime I was, um, you know, almost up there and then you saw me just randomly slide back down, it's because I did it on a frame that doesn't work. Um, the, that the, uh, the other sounds thing, so it, complicated. It's, it sounds complicated, but it's, 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 it's not. Um, okay. It's just, it's getting the movement down, understanding like when to understanding when to, to do your scroll swaps. So one of the things that you would notice is that as I was going up, like I couldn't just go up, um, reset, go up again, um, and keep going in from there, right? So I would have to go up, do the double jump, um, and slide back down just a little bit, um, mm. and then continue that because sliding back down puts me, um, back between the, uh, between the slope and that dead space. Okay. I think Piano Man explains it as well too. Like yeah. basically rewiring your brain to not jump for the Yeah, not for because you don't want to go for the in that jump you really don't want to go for that first frame uh double jump. Gotcha. So uh Oh, where would we be with a, a PlayStation Classic without a minecart section? Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, so uh, you guys saw me intentionally take a poison. Uh, Musashi gets a 50% increase in critical strikes uh, under certain conditions. One of them being poisoned, um, if he's tired enough, or if he has low BP. And so we utilize poison because... Uh, Blood pressure? Huh? What happened? Never mind. And you said BP, and my brain instantly said blood pressure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> bench of tight points is what the... <laughs> oh, okay. So the bench of tights are the things that... Those green things, right, that we use to save the people in? Yeah, yeah. So the precipice behind this game is that Musashi was essentially um, summoned here from a different world, right? Um, so he's, he's originally from Japan. Um, and he was summoned here, and his life essentially runs off of Benchotype. 
um, because that's what was used to summon him. I don't know how or why that works the way it does, but it does. So as you progress, um, as time goes on, your, your BP actually lowers um, naturally. Um, and so what, you, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to do things like bring food with you, like bread, um, so that you can uh, refill that. But there's enough drops and enough uh, opportunities for us to uh, not have to worry about that. Keep that up naturally. Yeah. Good job. That makes sense. That makes sense. I was just, I don't know, my brain was just really worried at first. Yeah, wait, we got blood pressure to watch this? Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, I was about to say, we were, we're so proper you, enough that we got to sleep. We got it. We can get heart attacks? That's crazy. This is getting, this is getting too real for me, bro. <laughs> Piano Man said the speedrun calls for a lot of claw controller. What do they mean by that? So it's it's essentially where you have to like put your your fingers in a claw position to do certain things. Um, and I've been I've been doing it a lot actually. Um, any of the uh, any of the so like so for instance uh, church entry early church that was definitely a claw move. Um, okay. Just because it utilizes the uh, the X and the triangle button. Oh, I see. I, I get it now. So you gotta like put your hands over the controller. Yeah. So you're you're. It's kind of like how I play Tekken. So yeah. That's yeah. That, that yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. So you're you're, yeah. you're utilizing your thumb, and for me, it'd be my index finger. Okay. Okay. That I get it. That makes a lot more sense when I like. Or pointer sat finger. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I was just close to grabbing a controller to try to like mimic it. But yeah. yeah. That's exactly how I would play like a. If I'm using like a controller to play a fighting game, that's exactly how I do it. So yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. All right, uh, we're actually good on health, so uh, we're just gonna go right along. Right. Uh, we're gonna make our way to the next boss fight, um, which is the Queen Ant. Um, and this is where, um, this is one of the fights where leveling up was kind of important um, because this is a two-part fight. We have to smack her in the face to have her expose her core. So we can hit that to actually deal damage uh, to the health bar. Okay. So the high, the stronger we are, you know, the faster that goes through. Uh, we really want crits, which is why we go into this poison. Um, wasn't able to get it, but should be fine. Uh, another thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna stand here, and uh, we're gonna go to sleep. Um, what we are waiting for, what we're get, what we're uh, trying to get to is uh, Friday morning, which is called uh, Sky Day. Okay, no crit again. What's the significance about Sky Day going on here? Um, Sky Day is a very specific day where um, we can access the final dungeon. Oh man, three times, wow, all right. So we're just, we're not even getting crits. What's the point of being poisoned? This game is on it. Okay. You know what? This is a good opportunity to sleep again. So I'll just, I'll take it and stop whining. Stop on them. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna keep it there at one. But this next hit should expose the core and I bet it's gonna be a crit. I'm almost willing to bet anything. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm glad I didn't bet nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, that's how my luck goes with this. I said I bet anything, but I didn't say what anything was. Yeah. <laughs> For it again, crit, please. There it is. Yeah. Hey, nice. Um... So you're seeing me kill all these things, um, and that's just to help build up my Lumina level. I'm gonna sleep till about, yeah, we're gonna stop right there. Farming and sleeping in the middle of a boss fight. Yeah. That's, yeah, I don't think you get that in any other game. <laughs> Hurt, please. Yeah. Hmm. Another 
grab me. Wait, what are we standing on? Uh, we're standing on her body. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. <laughs> That's gross. A little bit, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna swap to wind scroll. I'm gonna do that. This is where the clone comes in. And last hit. So this this nice. phase, this uh, this uh, boss has a three phase, um, and using the clone ability skips the third phase. Impressive. Uh, that was a tech that was recently discovered. Um, I say I say recently. It's I think it was within like the last year. That's what's up. I, I personally love seeing tech getting discovered for. Uh, game, especially recently, like that. Yeah, it's real nice to know that there's still vast of uh, dedication everywhere to these games. It's awesome. Hey, it was crazy because, like, so like world record right now is an hour and fifty two minutes. Um, mm. I uh, I want to say like a year and a half ago, two years ago, I I think uh, most of us were hitting the sub two. Uh, portions of the run and we thought that that was it like it, it's not gonna get any faster than this you know we'll hit sub we'll hit 155 on a good day and then that's just gonna be the run um uh that's gonna be the fastest we can get and then we had who was it uh for and uh god i can't think of the other guy's name uh two guys from japan came out of came out of nowhere and just like blew this run out of the water <laughs> hmm. um which is cool which is cool because it opened up the door for new strats it showed us some new tricks that we didn't even think to uh, try and do um and it's uh, it's definitely br br brought something fresh to this run yeah no that's dope it's, but when, whenever any type of run gets new life breathed into it it's incredible yeah ganma yeah thank you uh thank you rick Shout out, to, shout out to the brave friends of Musashi speedrunning community showing up in here too. So this uh, this next trick I'm doing, it's just called Monster Jump, and it's just a series of double jumps because we need to gain height. Mm. Man's been jumping so long the weather changed. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the time frame that we needed it to be. Uh, on Sky Day. So this crest can only be activated uh, on Sky Day. On a Friday. Yeah, on Friday, yeah. yeah. Um, and it has to be activated between the hours of 7 and 12 while it's raining. That's so specific. It is. I can't even tell you how, you how you're supposed to figure that out in the game. <laughs> it's so specific. <laughs> I'm gonna agree with uh, Blackheart's wings here. I think one of my favorite things that I found out recently was I don't know how long ago it happened, but the uh, with the Final Fantasy X when they figured out like how how long you take to actually hit start on a new game changes the RNG of the entire run. You know what other game is like that? What's that? Um, Link's Awakening for the Switch. Ooh. Um, the when you start the game, actually when you boot up the Switch is when the RNG actually starts. Um, so that determines your route for the uh, for the egg for inside the egg. That's <laughs> so. If you if, if anybody's familiar with the game, you know how you you have to uh, you have to get the book in the uh, library in the uh, town, and the and that tells you the directions you're supposed to take. Um, okay. If you boot your game up uh, and start the game at a specific time, you can. Um, bypass all that and just know what the route is nice that's what's up were you using the edge of the wall to know when you were supposed to do the uh the double jump yes no it was just a feeling um the, so yeah anytime you see me doing a double jump it's just it's just like a feeling but okay. if there's such a rhythm to it that you know i can look at the wall and see like when i'm sliding down and i can take yeah. that into account but other it, it's it, it really it's just a it's it's a it's a just fill it out, bro, for me. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I got you. It looked rhythmic, so I thought you were like looking at when the slide started. You're just like, okay, that's when it's go. Yeah, that's when it's time to do this. Yeah. That's the terminal on boot. Yeah. 
Your uh, your your RNG is determined on the, uh, when you boot up the switch. That's another game like that, mm -hmm. and I can't remember what it was. Um, so we are in the final stages. Um, I kind of hate this because you saw that I got access to the sky Sound scroll. Too. Um, but uh, they don't really give you any time to play around with it. It's just kind of like, oh hey, here's this ability. Have fun using it and navigating. Have, have fun using it for the first time while you navigate these electric fences and electric water. Uh, don't mess up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, yeah, this is looks. Yeah. We're playing a whole different game now. This is what's that game that when you were the kids? When you get the, they got to pull the, the bones out the thing and you can't touch the sides. Operation. Operation, yeah. <laughs> That's what that felt like for a second. Just watching it. But yeah, Silent Hill 2 is another big one that does that. Where you get like, um, what frame you start the game on determines your uh, puzzle RNG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another one. So I used the health there, um, health item there, because uh, our first boss fight we're coming up is, uh, we have coming up is Ben. And Ben hits like a truck. He's not big just for show. Um, he has bombs that hit for 90, anywhere between 99 and 101, depending on where your mind level is. Uh, he has a spear attack that hits for 126. Um, he has axes that hit for somewhere in the mid to high 80s. Like it's just, it's an all around not a, not a good time um, if you get hit. Oh, he's, he's strong. Yeah. Um, and that's not even <laughs> the worst of it for this um, for this part of the uh, part of the game. So we're essentially in the end game. There's a walker uh, that can one shot you. Like it hits for either 150 or 151, depending depending on how fast you uh, you are in this game. But no matter what, you will get hit. Um, and it's just a flame. Oh. The sound he makes is so funny. Oh! Okay. Okay. Really good, Ben. It's possible to one cycle him. I just, um, I missed a few hits. There it is. <laughs> yep, that's Ben. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Incredible. <laughs> we need to find that voice actor in particular. We need to speak to him. We need to yeah. get them, get them a, a, an article in somewhere, IGN or something. Ask him, you know, what the, the process was behind that. That was. You know, glorious. I can only imagine, like, hey, we, we've got this role and. I don't know how else to explain this to you, but we just need him to sound really, really, really stupid. Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think I got something. <laughs> I'm not an imbecile. <laughs> you want something like that? Yeah, that's perfect. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was London. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we are in the maze part of this, um, and you have to go through a specific set of doors. Um, and this is part of the, this is, uh, part of the game that I think tripped everybody up their first playthrough of this, because you find out, um, the doors that you go through by looking at the calendar that John gave you right before we had it, um, right before we came up here. Um, but it's never express that that's what you're supposed to do um it's just kind of like you exhaust all you your out, you, yeah you figure it out you exhaust like you kind of you're supposed to go through and like exhaust all your options and then you look at the calendar and you're like oh those signs look like the signs that are on the door maybe i should follow the signs and see you know if that takes me somewhere mm. oh i hate that so i missed an opportunity to do a trick um it only saves a few seconds uh, where you don't have to wait for this to come back down. If you line yourself up to the back corner of this uh, block, you can actually use it to uh, kind of 
push yourself upward to get on the platform and uh, and uh, just kind of go through it from there. Uh, worst case scenario is well, worst case scenario is you take damage and miss the and, and just complete uh, completely miss it. But more often times than not, what ends up happening to me is I uh, I take the hit, but I'm still able to uh, get where I need to go. It hits hard yeah. too, though. It's like it hits for like 86. Um, I'm gonna be quiet here because this is actually a really tight jump. So that is a frame perfect jump, and they expect you to do mm. that casually. Like that's not something that that was even part of the speed yeah, run. That's, that's just that's part of the game. Oh. oh, got it. We need to have a talk with. All right, we need to talk with whoever designed that. The uh, the ice level and the bats, all three of them. Line them up. <laughs> so what you just saw me do was a uh, was a new tech as well. Um, apparently, if you activate your wind scroll and uh, time your jump to jump back towards the wall, you end up jumping over the slope and end up uh, clipping through the wall, um, allowing you to bypass that part of the maze. So this guy has a giant Kamehameha wave um, that doesn't, that isn't completed. So we can just go to the corner of the map or corner of the screen and not take any damage. Got no range on nope. it. That's kind of, that's weak, B. Mystic. Hmm. Okay. So what you're gonna so the the what you're supposed to do is you can only hit him twice. Uh, do a full combo twice, and it's after the beam and after he drops um, both of those uh, balls. But there's a there's a chance that you can. There you are. Do that and get a hit in between. Mm. And what's cool is that I know you guys see me um, kind of in the middle of that fire, but like I said earlier, Lumina has, uh, the Lumina spin has a stupid amount of iframes, even when it's done. Mm. Nice combo. Is he cooked? He's cooked. Barbecue chicken. <laughs> that was actually a really good run. Or a really good uh, boss fight. Um, the mm, the nah, timing for that, that the timing to get the, uh, the in-between hits is, it's like really, really tight. Um, you kind of have to start swinging with, uh, swinging at him right when he uh, bounces the, the first ball. And uh, like I said, the window is, I think it's like two to three frames. Oh, he's playing nice today. Thank you. That guy, um, I know that's random for y'all. Um, so we have to grab this ability, grenade. It's the fastest um, ability to get rid of these doors. What he, the, what he, his movement right there is what you want but he can go literally anywhere he wants to. Anywhere. <laughs> you know, I've never seen that part, but the, the tone in your voice told me everything I needed to know. <laughs> Absolutely everything. I got flashbacks to some of the games I used to run, Resident Evil 2 and 3, when zombies would just completely misbehave. Uh -huh. I felt that in my bones. Remember the maze, please. Thank you. Smack him and keep moving, my favorite. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, let's see if we got it. Nope, okay, it's fine. Huh. There we go. Um, so it was found also last year, around, around the same time last year, um, that if you walk into the, um, into the hedges at a specific angle and do a slide, it pushes Musashi in just far enough where you can just clip through that, uh, that metal crate. Mm. Um, that uh, that guy you saw me uh, kill, it's not because we need experience or anything. It's because he is a... Uh, a nuisance? Yeah, that's that's not the word I was going to use, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got to keep it clean. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. We got to keep it clean. But that is the guy that can <laughs> one-shot you for 150. 
That's like a hundred percent of what you could possibly have as health. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not no. That's you're right. That's not a nuisance. That's a run in there. <laughs> so oh, any chance you get to take him out, you take him out. Once again, the smack and keep it moving. Nothing like it. It's just so funny to me. <laughs> are these metallic plants? Uh, yeah, they are. They're they're fake. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Marathon language. Okay, you're right. You're absolutely right. It, that hey that that's why. That's why J-Rock's here. <laughs> I'm here to keep it clean and keep it moving, you know what I mean? Call me the janitor. <laughs> okay, we are going to... Is he playing nice? He might play nice. We're going to try something here. You are not playing nice, and I don't like that. So those little bombs that he shoots, those are the ones that do 150? No, so he shoots fire, and you just haven't had the opportunity okay. to see it yet. Um, okay. So what I was kind of hoping for, um, those walkers ignore things like those doors. They can walk straight through them. What we can do is uh, we can set him up to to um, push us through that door. We just have to double jump at the right time. And so oh. this guy is where we need him to be. I just got to get up here fast enough. Oh, you can see the game struggling right mm -hmm. here. There's way too much going on here. Okay, we didn't get it, but that's fine. I'm not going to risk it. We're gonna grab that, we're gonna grab this, we're gonna grab that. Cool. So that flame right there, that flame hits for 150. Mm. I saw it earlier and I'm just like, is that what he's talking yep. about? That looks, oh man, nah, you don't wanna be the barbecue chicken. Once again, the soundtrack going hard, though. It is. <laughs> and so you get on this small platform, and uh, the devs were like, hey, you know what? Let's put these guys on this platform with you. Because there's nothing... Why would they do yeah, that? There's nothing scarier about having an unpredictable flame right in front of you. That can, <laughs> that can wipe you out in one hit. Yeah. You know what? You're fine. Yeah, you're not going nowhere. I think he's trying to get away from you, actually. <laughs> yeah. Actually, hold on. We'll use our cheese. The cheese? Sorry. <laughs> I, every time I hear cheese, I think of that one video. You know? <laughs> yeah. Guess what I got? Some cheese. Okay, what, you just, cheese? what you just saw here, that's a setup. And I hate that setup. And I don't know why the devs did that. So what happens is if you're not ready for it, that guy's gonna smack you for 89. And that's just enough time for the walker to throw his um, flames out to kill you the rest of the way. Um, also, there's DDR in this game. I didn't know if you knew that. I do now. <laughs> are those dish plates on her ears? Uh, she's a mouse. Oh. Doom, 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 doom. <clears throat> I'll let you focus out here. All right. Nice. Second one. Last one. This last, okay, so she's going to do something that's gonna make this sound like a not kid-friendly game. Um, but it's just her dying.
She's just dead, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing yeah. else. It's it's definitely one of those moments where like if you're watching this, if you're playing this game, you know, in your room, and your mom happens to hear it, she's gonna come in and question what you're doing. <laughs> She's going to walk by the door and just, like, <laughs> yeah. do the double take. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, it's fine. I was just just doing a DDR game. Like, you sure? <laughs> you sure that's what it was? <laughs> now, you, now, even then, you look bad because you're playing Brave Friends and Musashi. Yeah. You got to be honest about what's yeah. happening here. Honesty is the best policy. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. So is everybody named after some type of food here? Is that what I'm getting? So yeah. So the the um, everybody here has food based names. It's a this whole game is a food pun. So you are in the all you can eat kingdom, and it is under siege by the Thirst Quencher Empire. You have Princess Fillette. You have um, uh, Sir Ribson. Um, you have uh, a knight named Meatloaf. Like there's a oh no 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 one of the uh, sorry one of the mercenaries is named Meatloaf. So yeah. <laughs> um, oh my god. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. We are. Uh, I can't think of a single person that has played this game that likes this uh, this boss fight. Uh, his name is Tower of Death. Todd for short. All my homies hate Todd. Um, and the reason why I never met a Todd that I like. Yep. Hey, and this is gonna be on the list because he is 100% pure RNG. And he's giving me good RNG right now. I'm not going to hold my breath, though. So you have all these eyes, and your goal is to find these eyes and uh, give them a nice little smack. Um, wow. All right. This is, this is, this is going a lot Swimmingly? easier than normal. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Todd decided to get him some act right. It's up. Oh no, it's done. Okay, that's fine. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna navigate between. Oh, nope. Ah, I'll take the hit. Oh hey. Right in front yeah. of you. Yeah, we're gonna heal up. This hurts. Oh. Nope. Okay. Yeah, this is this is the jerkiness that is Todd. So there are three phases. There's the lightning wall, there's the solid walls, and there's the uh giant death omega beams. Um beams hit for 98, the electric fences hit for 70 something, and the walls hit for 30 something. Um, Indeed. Yep. So, out of everything, these are definitely not the ones you want to get hit with. So you made it sound like there was a good option. Yeah. I don't think that. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, you don't you don't want to get hit at all, right? You don't you don't want that. Yeah. But you know, if you have to choose between you, mother lover, okay. So, um, yeah, I saw it at the bottom. Yeah. Um, you definitely want to. Uh, if you have to make a choice. Uh, the beams are not on the list for that choice. There you are. Yeah. I, um, all poisons ain't built the same. Yeah. <laughs> so during this later part of the um, of the fight, um, the timing for the um, well, no, you get put on a timer. Uh, so the cores stay open for a set number of uh, for a set amount of time, and you have to find it before it runs out. Um, okay. Then it switches to another one, or no? Then it just um, skips that phase, and it goes skips so. That phase? Okay. So it goes. It'll do one of the attacks. It'll stop, and then it'll do that uh, that thing it did, where like it showed all the eyes, and then it goes to the next phase. But if you miss it, you just end up having to do an extra phase, um, which you can see like it's it's incredibly slow. Um, yeah. But we managed to get it. 
Nope. It's gotta be behind me. And it was. Come here. <gasps> no! Oh my god, okay. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> we were we were getting pretty that close. Was a little scary. Yeah, no, we were getting pretty close on time for when the uh, eye would close up. So definitely not it that wasn't the fastest, but it definitely wasn't the slowest. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are in the clear. And what I mean is, at any point in time, if I died, uh, we would go all the way back to the beginning of the game. Um, that's what makes this run so volatile. Um, no, we don't save. But uh, once you make it past Todd, um, they start you uh, just before... Um, Dark Luminal 1, or just after Dark Luminal 1, which you're about to see Dark Luminal 1 uh, here in a few minutes. And it's not a boss fight, it's more just a, a chase. Okay. Um, also, uh, the country guy's name is Rutrik. That guy... Why did he throw her like that? Because he's done with her. Uh, and that's that's kind of her trope, right? She kind of gets bounced around all over the place. She's he's, that was a that, so context. Uh, we got to the last uh, crest. Uh, turns out Todd was the crest guardian, um, and he basically says, "Hey, give me the sword, or I'm going to kill your girlfriend." We give him the sword. He's like, "All right, I don't need this woman no more." Yeets her off the stage. Um, yeah, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Um, but, so, the, the country guy that you heard earlier in the game, his name's uh, Rutrik. That guy's name is Fira Flatsky. I didn't let you hear his voice. I'm sorry. Um, but he has a German speaking accent. Speaking of Flatsky. Yeah, Fira Flatsky, like flat soda? Yeah, no, I yeah. said speaking of Flatsky. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now too. <laughs> <laughs> He's living up to his name now. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's foreshadowing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The dad has a German accent, weirdly enough. There's a line he has in this part that, I, again, I'm sorry that I didn't let you guys hear it, but um, John kind of confronts him and he's like, I was there the day you murdered my parents. And his response to that was, huh? I don't remember killing your parents. Like he just makes a, a <laughs> habit of killing people's parents. <laughs> It's just, oh, yo, yours? Which one were yours? <laughs> yeah. Like, I would I would remember if I killed your parents, but I don't remember that. <laughs> okay, this is like, yeah, you said one of the chase scenes. Yeah. So if I were to mess up for whatever reason and die, it would just pick me back up at the, uh, at the beginning of this uh, chase. Okay. It looks like the same pathway over and over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it's not long. I mean, for me, watching it kind of was because it was the exact same thing over, over and over. over. Yeah, no, it gets... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do. At that point, it's like, when is it going to end? Yeah, and I was going to say, getting to the first time, getting to play this for the first time, that would be your thought process halfway through this. Like, does this just stop? Am I supposed to do something? Should I fight him? Am I supposed to die? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you turn around and find out that wasn't the answer. And I feel like most people went through that, right? I would have. Yeah. Not intentionally, though. It would have just happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, he absorbed our rival, and for whatever reason, that caused a transformation. And this is turning in him, turning him into Dark Lumina 2, the second version. Um, and remember earlier when I was saying that the princess has this habit of uh, being thrown everywhere, getting just getting mm -hmm. yeeted for, for no reason whatsoever? It's about mm -hmm. to happen again. Actually, no, it already happened. It already happened. So she got yeeted again. Um, 
Got the Team Rockets so blasting up. off again, you know. <laughs> so messed up. Okay, um, I'm gonna be a little quiet here. Mm -hmm. I'm having a snack, so you go ahead. Nah, you're fine. Oh, right, what we eating? I mean, a volcano bowl. Tuna, salmon, veggies, rice, avocado, the works. Uh, you make it? No, absolutely not. Oh, okay, I'll, yo, I was about to be impressed. <laughs> Who think I was sitting here cooking while we was, <laughs> while we was doing this? <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't hear one skillet. That's crazy. No. <laughs> All right. <sighs> so, turns out the princess was thrown um, just under... The final uh, uh, place we do this last fight, or the place we do this last mm -hmm. fight, yeah. Survivor. Yeah, you know she's she's got them. She got them good genes, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got that uh, buoyancy in her skin. Living just to be thrown again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so this fight is pretty straightforward. Boop the snoop five times and then uh, smack him when he's tired. Mm -hmm. Ah. So he has two attacks that he does. Um, that's the slower one. What we want is the fire. Okay. And again, he did not give me the fire. That's okay. Wow, my guy. What is going on? It's a marathon run. And he knows it. <laughs> he said you were underestimate. Let me help with that a little bit. <laughs> oh, did it early. Oh, yep, he got me. That's okay. That's all right. This is what the healing stuff is for. He. Why does he hurt less significantly less than everything else that we just fought? That's a good question. Oh, now you give me the fire. Thanks. All right. Oh. Nice. Last phase. Is that it? Oh, it's not all yet. So just uh, to give a uh, heads up to the guy uh, holding the timer, um, last hit of this boss fight is time, which is, it's, uh, it's a five hit uh, boss. Okay, got you. Big shout out to Richard and Ray for holding it down for yeah. us all all day. And they're gonna be holding us down for holding it down for us all weekend too. All right. Is that the dude from House of the Dead? It could be. Yeah, it could be that or it could be Freezer. It depends on how you look at him. <laughs> I'm invested. All right, I'm going to do something uh, kind of tricky here. How did I explain how that missed? That's okay. Somebody said you too? Okay. <laughs> Again. Okay. That's all right. So the game wants you to hit him between phases, but there's a way to get some extra hits. And I'm not doing it because I'm throwing my uh, right, heal here. I'm throwing my, uh, what you call it, too early. 
98? 98. Okay. I'll try and make the adjustment to get this. Didn't get it. Okay. That's fine. Dang. So, what sucks about this part is that um, he's very active. Oh, we got him right there? Yo! I didn't even know that was possible. Wow. Bet. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got it. Done. Mmm. GG. <sighs> That's game. That's game. So, that last, uh, that last hit is what I was trying to uh, do on those other phases, but I was, uh, I was throwing it just a little bit too early. Like that, that, uh, that fight is very specific in when you want to throw your, uh, throw your sword. Um, so it, mm -hmm. In terms of like your distance, you can't be too close because if you're too close, he's just going to activate into the next uh, phase. Um, but we got it, we got it. And we are, uh, I, I was really, I was really pushing. I really wanted to impress y'all and do a sub two run. Um, we were off by, it looks like two minutes and some change, but still like this is, this is, this was a very, very solid run. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> wow, that's big. That was, that was a very, very fun run. Very impressive. The nostalgia aspects. The um, the pause buffering, you could see the difficulty in it, and it was fun all the way through, man. Yeah, that was dope. Big round of applause in chats for for Proto for this run. I appreciate it. Please. <laughs> it's all because you went on vacation and like oh, we got a little cutscene. If y'all want to hear some uh, cut, uh, some there, voice acting. My child, you're correct. It is all my fault. I'm awfully sorry, but you didn't have to destroy the castle, dear. From now on, we will tell you before we take a vacation. You know, that would have been helpful from the start. Yeah, right? <laughs> we could have avoided None an entire video happened. game. <laughs> Which, again, you know, going back to what we were talking about earlier about uh, adults and bad parenting. Mm. Mm. He saved my life. Saved your life? All right. You're like, what did we do? Yeah. <laughs> A giant hole in the castle. <laughs> you, you're telling me you almost died? We're coming up on uh, the most iconic line in the entire in the entire game, and it's kind of cool because of uh, how it was animated. But I'll shut up and let y'all listen to it. Legendary brave fencer Musashi. How's it going, old man? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I cut to credit. I, I like that they put emphasis on that, not because it was just like an amazing line or whatever, but like they really wanted to like um, add, you know, visuals to the. Uh, to the uh, to the dialogue, so like they showed him, uh, they showed him talking, or they animated him talking, you know, instead of like all the other yes. stuff where they've got the animated. I'm gonna move my arm up and down while I speak type deal. <laughs> and they put they, there was points where they was like, we need to put effort into this. Yeah, that was it. That was it. That was it. And it was so worth it <laughs> to wait till the very end of the game to get it. It was so worth it. <laughs> You know, I might say that to my boss when I go into work tomorrow. Yeah, hey, do it, do it. And I, 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 I need you. I need hey, your. I, like I need your. I need your your camera on because I gotta hear it. I, I want to hear the response. You you you'll hear the response when you tweet me tweet. Hey, I got fired today. <laughs> <laughs> Guess why? Uh, and you know what? Would have been worth it. Well, no, probably not. But 
<laughs> I, may, mm, I will say nothing less. This was an amazing. <laughs> this, this was an amazing run, though, man. This was really, really dope. Appreciate you want to tell the people who you are one more time and where they can find you? Yeah. So, again, my name is Protokami. Uh, you can catch me here. You can catch me um, on YouTube. I, it's it's literally just highlights, uh, Twitter as well. Um, I also run a retro um, modification and repair shop um, where I repair and modify retro consoles. Um Right now, we uh, we are doing mostly uh, Game Boy advances and uh, some uh, along those series. Actually, you know what? Here's one thing. This is my this is my baby. This is my pride and joy, and I, I love showing this off anytime I get a chance. This is the Game Boy Color. Show? It has um, a Suicune shell. Um, it has an IPS screen, um, so it's a lot brighter. What the coolest feature that I like about this though is that at the bottom. Uh, where it says Game Boy Color, you can actually change the color on that. Um, this was, like I said, this is my baby. It's a really cool build. Um, just some of the stuff that I do. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, not to not to you know uh, throw a pitch out there. But uh, <laughs> I uh, mean, if there ever was a pitch, yeah. um, Nolan Ryan would be jealous of that one. Man, that's <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> appreciate it, appreciate it. But uh, yeah. That's where you guys can find me. Um, I, I appreciate the uh, the support from the community showing up and just being out here. Um, I appreciate the people that, you know, uh, that enjoy this game. I appreciate people that are seeing this game for the first time and, uh, and enjoying it as well. Um, definitely, if you get the opportunity to play it, uh, play it 100%. You, you will enjoy the story. You'll enjoy the game. Um, you'll just, you'll have a fun time from start to finish. That's all for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Uh, don't stick. Don't go anywhere, y'all. We got more coming up. We got the finale coming up next. But a couple things real quick first. Uh, Games Done Quick is looking for a new mainline event volunteer coordinator. Feel free. To, feel free to review the duties and apply at gamesdonequick.com/jobs if you're interested. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to press the like on like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, like I said, don't go anywhere. We got one more run coming up next. We got the Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix finale. Uh, quick break. We'll be right back into it, everybody. See y'all in a few minutes.